Okay, welcome everyone. Welcome to our new grantees meeting. Very glad to have you here. I'm gonna go ahead and um, share my screen here, maybe. Got a couple of different screens going here. Sorry about that. Hang on with me here for just a second, please. I noticed a couple of you came in just at the end of our previous conversation, and I was just uh, reminding people that if you your payments don't get to you in a timely manner, send me an email because, you know, um, uh, I will follow up on it. That's something that, uh, you know, uh, really bugs me is when we don't get the the money out to you guys right away. So don't be shy if you don't get your payment like within 30 days. And, and keep in mind that wait until the window closes. Like for now, right now we're in the window has closed, but they're still processing it. But um, and we give you an extra week extension. So that means, it, you know, if you don't get anything uh, like by June 15th, start sending me emails and I'll, you know, find out what's going on. All right. Well, we, I know we have a fairly small group this morning, but that's okay. It's kind of nice and cozy. Um, I would love it if we could just take a couple of minutes to uh, share your name and your program, you know, as we're getting to know each other, it's always nice to have a reminder of who you are, where you're with and um, what your summer plans are for your program or personally. And um, I think we'll do how we kind of have done before. If you wanna go ahead and share and then just kick it to somebody else. Uh, I can start, I'm Heidi Brown. I'm the director of the Iowa After School Alliance. Um, my summer plans include one son who is graduating from high school and one who will be going into his senior near, year next year. So we've got a lot of college stuff happening this summer and moving one out. Looking forward to that. And also it's a little, you know, bittersweet. But uh, Keely, would you like to take it? Sure. I'm Keely Schaffner with Fort Madison Community Schools. Um, I don't have any really exciting summer plans because I used up every last day off that I possibly could have to have my maternity leave as long as possible. So um, pretty uh, business as normal summer. Um, we're looking at um, transitioning though our elementaries into one building. And so my office is being relocated um, and to a space that's going to be a little bit more like hands-on for our program. So I am confident that I will spend a large majority of the summer trying to get everything put it away, organized, and then try to make it a little bit more like homey for the kids. So um, I think that's my big exciting plans. <laughs> um, and I'll turn it over to Erin. I'm Erin Berkshire. I'm director of Dodger Academy after school and summer programming um, in partnership with Fort Dodge Community School District. Um, plans for summer, we will have our second year of summer programming thanks to the 21st century funds. Um, it will be 10 and a half hour days again for 11 weeks. Um, and we've kind of picked up the slack of summer school. So that's a whole new ball game and I'm kind of excited to see how it works out for us. Um, let's go to Brian. Hi, I'm Brian Burton with the Boys and Girls Club of the Cedar Valley. And our summer plans are, as always, we will have a 12 week program for all day. Um, we're gonna work with the Waterloo Schools this year uh, our partner and they will be hosting their summer school in our buildings this year so that we are um, we're excited about that it's going to make it a little more hectic but um, with them being involved it will allow us to have more kids that we can serve we can feed during the summer um, we'll end up serving three meals a day there at, at that program and i'm um, working with another partner the northeast Iowa food bank so Pretty exciting thing that's happening this summer. And I will throw it over to, is it William um, McGraw? 
Hi, it's Wes. You're close. <laughs> um, hi, I'm Wes McGraw. I'm the director of activities at Centrally and uh, director of after school programming. Um, this summer, um, we'll be out at our school and uh, our on site coordinator has been organizing some stuff with the uh, Girl Scouts. We're going to take some trips. Um, I think they're going to a camp thing to do a camp out type thing as well this summer um i kind of miss what we're all supposed to cover because our announcements went on for like five minutes while you guys were talking um nope, but those, you're doing so, it <laughs> am, am i missing it is there anything else i'm supposed to nope. add to that okay thank you <laughs> perfect and then i'll pass it over to elva yes hi good morning i'm elva griffin uh program manager for iaa um, my summer plans include uh, planning uh, impact, the impact after school conference, which uh, is really exciting for us. And um, yeah, it's just, you know, fun to get to look forward to seeing you guys all in person. So we do have those dates. Those are the end of September. We will be uh, at the Stony Creek Hotel in Johnston, and that's September 26th and 27th. So save the date. <laughs> And I'll pass it on to Vic. <laughs> Thank you. Um, my summer plans is to probably go uh, make a trip to Michigan, see the grandkids, and uh, you know, um, enjoy the nice weather. And it looks like the drought is over, so you know, uh, the grass is growing now every week <laughs> instead of every three weeks. So right. that'll keep me busy. <laughs> Indeed. Oh, thanks, everyone. That was nice. Nice to hear. Um, the the first thing I want to share with you all, and I did drop a, a link in the chat. Um, and since we are such a small group, I, I think we would have time right now if you want to go ahead and follow that link if you're on your computer. Um, I want to show you the uh, Mizen education platform. Um, if you are not familiar with this, it is a, uh, here, I'm gonna go ahead and share my, my screen and show it to you. Uh, it is a really kind of cool app that um, will give you access to very high quality out of school time curriculum that you can curate yourself for your program or you can direct your program staff to. Here, let me go ahead and share this with you. You do have to create your own um, your own login and password. It's very easy to do. Uh, there's a link in the agenda as well as in the chat right now. Once you're in there, uh, you'll see just a ton of options um, for you for specifically out of school time curriculum. Uh, you can browse, uh, you can just look at all activities like I'm in right now, or you can browse by category. So if you're looking for something to do specifically with arts or STEM, uh, SEL, uh, college and career readiness is a wonderful um, collection um, to look through. Uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and just click on one here and show you what you get when you open it. So like I said, you can filter by um, the category, a tag, or even the time frame. Um, let's say you have 30 minutes that you need to fill and you wanna find a, a you know, a an indoor game or something like that, that will fill 30 minutes. You can absolutely filter by all of those uh, details and find something good by grade level. This great, this particular lesson has to do with grades six through 12. Um, as you scroll down, uh, you'll see that it will tell you what materials you need. If you need any resources for this particular lesson, there's a tutorial video that goes with it. Uh, prep for your staff, and then the steps to your activity, just a really well and simply laid out lesson plan um, for your staff to use. One new feature of this Mizen app, um, for those of you that may have been familiar with the, with the old version, uh, it was kind of like on your phone that you would use it. 
um, or on your computer, but now they've actually created an option for you to print out your, um, your curriculum as well, which is really, really nice if you wanted to put together like a binder um, or something like that for summer um, for your staff. Uh, it, it makes it very simple for you to do. Um, this, let's see here, I'm gonna stop sharing so I can see you guys again. This is free for everyone. Um, it's created by the Mott Foundation, which is um, a funder of the 50 state uh, after school network. So all of the lessons that they've curated are, are really, really good and high quality. And um, I think I think it's really cool. So I would really encourage you to make yourself a login, have your staff make themselves a login too, if they're putting together their own you know, curriculum for the summer, or if they they even just need a little binder of, I mean, who doesn't need transition activities, right? <laughs> you need 75 of them every day. Uh, that's a great uh, option for you to use. Any questions about that? I just want to say that I recommend this highly. Um, they created this during the pandemic when schools were closed, people didn't have access to a lot of their traditional materials. And like I said, they knew everybody had a phone. That's why I was first, uh, you know, mm -hmm. geared to use with a phone. But they've expanded it a lot and made it better than ever. So, um, you know, the, and plus it's created by uh, folks who know about after school. Mm -hmm rather than, you know, just a textbook company or something. Exactly. And, you know, I know that, you know, too, and you're probably in, in your uh, exploration of curriculum, but oftentimes you'll find things that are, that were created for the school day or, you know, for, for stuff that's happening during the day or museum or whatever. And then they try to, um, you know, they try to make it fit for after school, but these are specifically written for after school and summer programs. So you know that you're going to get good stuff that's going to be really relevant. All right. Next thing on our agenda uh, is this summer lesson uh, PowerPoint, which I will share. And I'm going to try to get it shared as a uh, presentation here, Vic, just a second. Okay. This is actually like... There's two parts. Last month, we talked about preparing for summer. And this month, it actually has lessons that you can use. And, um, you know, one of the first things that you need to do when you're dealing with kids is make sure that you're well organized. And I highly recommend Harry Wong. He's the author of The First Days of School. And his methodology can keep kids engaged, organized, and so you're not running around doing a lot of extra work uh, to keep control of the classroom. And I've used this with alternative high school kids, and it works for them too. I mean, uh, everybody, I gave everybody a job, and, you know, they, I had, uh, kids, uh, you know, uh, asking me, uh, can I be the person that empties the garbage? Well, they wanted to do that because then they got to go by the drinking fountain. But still, um, you know, they were engaged in uh, doing their work. Now, here's a resource that you can get online. It's an implementation guide for the first days of school. Now, this is something probably every uh, school in Iowa has in their, you know, teacher library, or they might have it in the regular library. But anyway, there's a link at the bottom, and you can get this implementation guide, and it's 92 pages of really good ideas to organize your classroom. And, you know, Harry's been around for, Jesus, probably over 30 years, but, you know, his his stuff is rock solid. Um, and it works, so. Okay, um, first lesson, benefits of social emotional learning. Um, 
and you want to create uh, better attitudes towards uh, towards others. Uh, with kids, you want to teach them to have better attitudes uh, to themselves. You want to, you know, show them how they can have more confidence, perseverance, empathy, and uh, connection and commitment to school and a sense of purpose. Um, you know, you want to find the good in every child and get them to see that and give them a little vision of what's possible for their future. It's heartbreaking sometimes when you talk to these kids and you find out that they've been through a lot for their young age and you want to make a difference. Um, and it takes, uh, it's hard at first. And after a while, you just, you know, you'll naturally be that person that can connect to them. So you want kids to be um, comfortable in your classroom and you want to have them more engaged so that they're not just students, but they're active participants. So this lesson is pretty simple. Um, you give every student in your classroom a job and you can change the job so that everyone gets a chance to try the different jobs in the classroom. Uh, things like a calendar helper, uh, stair, a chair stacker, book collector, door holder, uh, line leader, lunch helper, paper passer, uh, pencil helper. Well, you may not use pencils anymore, but keep in mind, I've been around for a while. <laughs> uh, plant helper, teacher's helper. You know, I had printed up a couple of badges and, uh, you know, put them on a, a little uh, square holder, you know, like you, when you go to a meeting and uh, there's a little pin and they can put it on there. And they would love, everybody was trying to become my classroom assistant. I had two in every classroom. Um, and, you know, that was to them a status symbol. Uh, trash helper. Uh, first aid helper. You know, shoe tying helper. You know, if you've got little ones, they need somebody that's going to help them practice tying the shoes. And you may think of something that I didn't include in this list because, you know, classrooms have changed and they're continually changing a little bit over time. But um, one of the analogies that I used when I was working with high school alternative kids was that think of my classroom like the real world. Some of you are going to get promoted. Some of you, your grades are going to go up. You're going to get a raise. Some of you are going to get laid off because you, your behavior necessitates you being out of the classroom for a while. And some of you, uh, hopefully not very many, some of you will be fired because of your behavior. So um, it's very much, you know, like the real world. And uh, because there were high school kids, I had a job bulletin board and every week you know we would update that with jobs and it could be a newspaper clipping it could be that somebody got a job and they needed more people they could just put a handwritten uh notice on there and that more than a lot of other things really got the kids energized and then uh then one of the kids said to me uh mr j um i want to go for a job interview but I don't have a, you know, a nice dress shirt and a tie. And I said, oh, really? And uh, asked the, the other students, I says, well, who else needs clothes that they can wear to an interview? And half the class put their hands up. And uh, I said, well, let me see what I can do. Went out to a, a local thrift store that was run uh, by a church group. And we set up a clothes closet so those kids could go and get interview clothes at no cost. And uh, it made a big difference. A lot of them, you know, would come back and say, 
you know, I because I had some, something nice to wear, I got the job. So every classroom is a little bit different. I And I've done elementary classrooms as well. I had one where I had a principal call me on a Monday morning and um, I said, well, you know, I'm... It's not it's not good weather. Do you really need me to come in and as a you know substitute for this teacher that didn't show up? And they said, Yeah, yeah. And I said, Okay, here's what we're gonna do. I said, You tell all you go in and tell the kids that we're gonna have we're gonna work on a newspaper today. Every one of them is, is gonna be part of a newspaper. So we're gonna have some reporters and the re at least three reporters who are gonna go and talk to some other teachers about uh, important things that they should be doing. Uh, I want to have some people that are artists. I want to have, you know, some people that are going to be writing some different articles about what's new in the news, what's the weather. Um, we're going to have uh, ads um, and we're going to put together a newspaper for the day. And by the time I got there, the <laughs> Those little kids were all busy and uh, they were all excited because they had never, you know, uh, did something like that before. It was just normally um, use the worksheet, open the book. And, you know, it's our job in after school to make learning more excited for the kids. Okay, so here are some things that uh, go on. Uh, mostly with the, the classroom, you have a calendar of what's expected. Um, you take attendance, you have your morning assignment. Sometimes there's cleanup, you have bathroom time, lunch, afternoon assignment, cleanup, and then dismissal. So now here's the second lesson. This is really a powerful social emotional lesson. It was from a, a new teacher in Colorado. And she wanted to get to know her students. So she said, I want you all to write to me something about yourself. And the title is going to be, I wish my teacher knew. And the kids would write about something that they wanted the teacher to know about them. And it, you know, it was powerful. And she went on to write a book and uh, about this. And then basically write down um, anything you want your teacher to know about your life. And uh, this is the teacher, and there's a link that you can go to for a free implementation guide. Okay, lesson three, Wizard of Oz. And this one can be turned into a unit because there are more than one Wizard of Oz books out there. In fact, there's a whole collection. And uh, there's an online video clip. And I recommend showing a clip before you do a lesson like this, because then the kids can make a connection, you know, with the, the audio visual elements. And then uh, talk about the chat, the characters, the story, and explain that sometimes a movie is very different from what the author wrote in a book. And then you can read this book for free online. And I did a copy and paste. And what I did was I took the words that I thought the kids might need help with, and I made them bold and underlined. So these would be your vocabulary words. And, it, you know, you're going to find a lot of them in there. Uh, for example, Garrett. You know, we, we don't call an attic a garret anymore. Um, and we don't call a tornado shelter a cyclone cellar, cellar, but that's what they were referring to in those days. So, you know, that helps your students. You could write that on the board, those, those words, or you could make a sub-assignment where those vocabulary words, um, the kids have to... Um, use them in a sentence independently from this story. So a lot of good uh, literacy strategies in here. And so in the, ne the next page, oh, whoa, whoa. <laughs> go back, go back. <laughs> okay, so 
um, again, more uh, words in there that, uh, for example, gaunt, you know, so so thin that they look like a skeleton. We don't hear that word used too often. Um, and anyway, the book description is a little bit more vivid. Hollywood tends to um, paint a more um, sanitized version sometimes of what the author intends. All right. <clears throat> So again, you can see the uh, keywords. Um, and some of those should be familiar, but keep in mind, if you're dealing with kids that are maybe a couple grade levels behind in their reading levels, these are words that uh, might stump them. So it's, it's a good idea. And also keep an open that if there's another word that they don't know that they could add to the vocabulary list with a word maybe you thought they knew, but they really didn't know. And kids like it when they can add to the vocabulary list. That gives them the reassurance that uh, anything in the story that they're not comfortable, that they don't know, they can always ask you for help and add it to the list of learning. Okay. So, again, they don't, instead of a tornado, they called it a cyclone. And uh, I added a couple of pictures just so that it wasn't all text and words. And you can do that fairly easily because there's, you know, a lot of pictures from the Wizard of Oz on there. And... The nice thing is you're not violating any copyright. These are all public domain works. So that means as a teacher, you can copy that. Um, you can add pictures to it. Um, and you can share it freely with your class. You can't do that with Disney stuff. Disney might come after you. <laughs> um So this is uh okay. So notice that the description. Um okay, let's go to the questions for discussion here. Name the characters in the book. So there was, you know, Dorothy Toto, Ann M, Uncle Henry. And what did Uncle Henry have in a book that he didn't have in a movie? A long beard. And then how was Ann M described in the book? He's different from the movie. They said she looked like a skeleton. And that was because they, you know, they were poor farmers. And uh, um, and Dorothy was an orphan. So what does that mean? You know, there might be some kids that are in uh, foster care. And they can, they will, you know, relate more to the story because the, you know the main character in the story was an orphan they don't really mention that too much in the movie uh and what is a prairie you can this is uh you know a little exploration on science and how is the house in the book different compared with the movie in the story it was a one-room house in the movie it's a larger house with an attic and several rooms and then uh, you know of course, the garret being an attic. So, and then uh, three pictures all show one thing in common, the cyclone or the tornado. And, uh, you know, I put the answers in here, but when you're working with kids, you may want to take those answers out. Um, and then the five characters in the that are in the movie, but not in chapter one. That is Professor Marvel, Miss Gulch, and the three hired hands, they were not in chapter one. Um, and the book refers to Kansas tornado as a cyclone. In 1900, that was the word they used. Uh, now that word cyclone re only refers to tropical storms. And there's a link if you wanna know more about you know weather and uh, cyclones. 
And then what do you think will happen with that when the house lands? See if the kids have seen the Wizard of Oz before. And now here with this lesson are, are all the Iowa core standards you're going to meet. So, you know, somebody asks you, oh, are you meeting the, uh, you know, the, the Iowa core standards with your lessons? You can, if you use this one, you can print this up and say, these are all the standards that we're working on with the kids. Because a lot of times I get questions from people and they think that the after school programs are, you know, just babysitting the kids that we're not at doing the actual learning, but uh, we really are. And here are links to all the different Wizard of Oz books. So you can replicate that lesson and go on and look at some of the other books in the Wizard of Oz series. So that could keep you busy all summer. Here are some other references that you can use. Got teacher resources from IPTV, uh, Teacher's Guide to Literacy and Interventions, um, Dismantling Poems, um, a visual dictionary that's probably works well with kids. You know, they start typing the words in and at, uh, they come up uh, right away. Uh, Marzano has some vocabulary games that are really good. And, you know, there's just a lot of resources here that you can take advantage of. There's probably enough stuff in here and with the the um, the mizzen to provide you with a whole year worth of stuff. And again, sight word resources. If you've got, you know, um, officially they say to use the sight words um, with the youngest kids, kindergarten, I think till um, second or third grade. And then they say they don't need that anymore. But I have a different approach. If a kid is a couple of years behind um, in their reading, they may have been absent. You know, they they you got to take in consideration that we've got to deal with chronic absenteeism. If a kid was uh, absent on a third of the days, there's a lot of words that they don't know. And so this is a reinforcement. Um, and I would suggest go ahead and use them. I used to use these words with high school kids. I didn't tell them that, you know, I just took them and put them into a different format. So they wouldn't see that this is, you know, like a recommended grade, third grade uh, reading words. Um, but these things work. Now, if you use these sight words, believe it or not, uh, there's a few thousand words that will make the students familiar with over 90 5% of all the words in print and online. Just a few thousand. There are some words they do in high school that, uh, you know, they only appear once in high school, but they make them learn those words. <laughs> I think we need to focus when we're talking about helping a student that's behind on those words they're gonna see over and over and over again in their life. That's gonna give us more bang for the buck. Okay, and with that, there's my contact information. Will Any you share questions? this PowerPoint out with us since I have the actually, links in it? It's not a PowerPoint, it's a PDF, but the reason I did it as a PDF is because then the links, you can click on them and get right to the sites. Perfect. Thank you, Vic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Aaron, we'll share it in the when Elvis sends the email and then we'll post it on the website too, like we like we always do. Wonderful. All right. Go ahead and just One throw more the thing to share. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right. 
Uh, let me stop and then you can put your document up. Here we go. I'll send this out to Heidi and they'll include it when they send out the uh, the notes. This is just a document about claims in CASA. Um, it was meant to supplement the stuff we already have online. Um, and it's, this is just showing you some stuff from the department webpage on uh, what they want in, in CASA. You know, they're, they're looking at funding codes and it's real important that when you, the amount that goes in the CASA has to match your claim spreadsheet and your general ledger. Um, if there's some kind of an adjustment, have your CFO contact me. Don't just, because if these things don't match, it's a nightmare. Um, I can tell you just the other day that uh, it came back to me that somebody was um, a penny over when, when they checked it. And, uh, you know, they're checking. It's not just me approving a claim. Then after I get done, it gets checked. So I, I said, you know, um, let's not worry about a penny. I will take a penny out of my pocket and give it to you. <laughs> but uh, keep in mind that uh, these there there's increasing um, review of your claims. So this is a guide to help you uh, get the information in. And uh, the attendance now, there's one for each quarter. So you need to put that in. Um, and this is the, the claim spreadsheet. And it goes, uh, talks about the different sections. The biggest one is the um, the program area, and that's personnel, that's contracted services, supplies, uh, snacks and meals. Um, then there's professional development, and that's there. You need to spend a minimum of five percent in that category. And then there's uh, student access, evaluation, and evaluation has a limit of four percent. And then uh, other admin costs, there's, there's a limit to that of 8%. So, and then a little bit about line item adjustments. Um, you can every quarter make an adjustment. You may have more money in transportation than you need, and you can transfer some money out of that into another category. However, you cannot transfer out money that's in professional development. That has to be spent. I've had grants where they required 25% be spent on professional development. So this 5% is not, not much at all uh, with federal programs. And with the line item adjustment, um, you need to send it to me before you put it into CASA so that I can review it. And then I'll send you an email back saying this is approved and uh, you should be good. And then here's a link to other budget uh, information. It's, you know, there's the, the guide. Um, and then also the federal Edgar and uh, OMB guides to the budget. But we also have, you know, two documents on the website. One is uh, the guide to budgets and accounting, which is more for your CFO. And then there's another um, that's made for directors that talks about the process of reviewing your budget every month and then how to do a line item adjustment or an amendment. Um, and at any time, if you need help with, you know, with the budget, uh, reach out to me. Any questions?
Okay, so why don't we uh, use this time for you guys uh, to talk about your programs and some of the great things you got planned for summer. And Heidi's got a bunch of questions in the chat. Yeah, we don't have to follow those. They're just kind of to get the ball rolling. Uh, you can open your chat. I just like to leave us uh, the screen share off so we can look at each other while we talk. <laughs> but uh, there's some good questions in there. If, if there's anything that you want to share or that you want to hear from your uh, colleagues or anything you want to talk about at all. Go ahead and come on chat and... Um, one of the best professional developments I went to this year, um, it was Celebrating Educators of Color, um, hosted by University of Iowa down in Iowa City at the Graduate Hotel at the end of April. Um, it was really eye-opening to see so many educators of color in Iowa. Um, they had, I think, close to 150 participants this year, and it was it was its third year, um, but I think it would be a great resource for some of our um, other people in the um, OST network um, to possibly send some of their staff next year. Um, it just created great networking opportunities for people that do what we do, not only out of school, but during the school day. I muted. Erin, will you, if you have time or and think about it, will you send me an Elba a, a link to what you attended? Yep, I sure will. And then I'll also send you um, the lady's name. Her name's Amira okay. Nash. Um, and then, because oh, I know okay. she was looking for um, people to possibly present next year um, and way to like get other partnerships that's similar to what we do. Cool. Yeah, but I'll, thank you. I'll connect you guys. Sounds yeah, great. That'd be great. Is anyone going to the summer symposium in San Francisco? doesn't look like it <laughs> okay, then. never mind if you decide to go I'll be there Erin we can uh I think the next director's meeting is before that symposium I'm sure I bet there are people that are going okay I'll ask at the next one too yeah well you should we should connect to everybody at least get a text list or something so you can meet up when you're there right that'd be great because I mean we all do it so it's fun and it's a requirement of the grant that we go. So I think it would be great for us to really connect all of our resources. That'd be really cool. What are some things you would like to see uh, this committee cover over the next year for your new sites? I think that when you're a new director, it's nice if we were to hold the meetings and be able to discuss like, what should you make sure that you're doing during this quarter or what information should you be tracking? Mm -hmm. I think that, you know, you go back to like what the grant requirements are and you um, look at that, but it's easy sometimes to like miss some of the smaller details or, um, and then, you know, you look at where, you, what's gonna be coming up down the pipeline and you're like, oh my goodness, did I track that? Do I have that? Exactly. And I think that um, maybe just more often reminding each other like what we need to make sure that we're tracking and following and making sure that, you know, some of that gets done ahead of time. So like, like I know that like here, I need to find someone to do evaluation on this year that just ended. So like, maybe I should have already set that up. I'm not sure. And so yeah. I think that maybe some of those types of discussions taking place during these meetings could be helpful. Well, Keely, for an evaluator, we have a list on the iowa21cclc.com website for evaluations. And um, that was a great question because when we didn't have the contract with the Alliance, the we have two documents that we share out and uh, they're timelines of things that you should be doing at this time of the year. One of them is just for PD and the other one is for all the other things we've got going on. And uh, Heidi and Elva are working on updating that list. Uh, yeah. So expect that to be coming out. 
And it and it is out right now. So as we have new ones, we will add them. But you can go there today if you want, Keely. Yeah. Wonderful. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording just in case there's anything that we want to talk about. Uh, not for posterity.